I will be talking about how to make cross um, cross platform apps uh, in summer in forms utilizing uh, Firebase as a serverless backend. So um, my name is uh, Björn Engel Hansen. I'm working for a company called Framex that we established a few months back. Uh, done uh, summer in development for about yeah, three plus years, and uh, doing some experimenting and prototyping with uh, Firebase last year, and actually did a project on Summer in Forms and Firebase this spring. Um, okay, so just how many has done Summer in development? Okay, not that many. And what about Firebase? Even fewer. Okay. Yeah, so this is not a talk about submarine as such and Firebase. I'll just go very briefly through uh, the concept of that. Uh, submarine is a cross-platform development platform for, uh, uh, for Android, iOS, and Windows. <coughs> and you, can, uh, you can make, the concept is that you, you share the business logic and then you make, uh, uh, traditionally you make the UI specific in for iOS and Android. So it exposes the, the full API of both platforms, uh, but then you get this specific UI development for, for both platforms. Uh, with Summer in Forms, um, you can also do the UI in, in shared code, either in a SAML-like uh, notation or uh, just uh, with the C-sharp code directly. Um, yeah, and with Firebase, sorry, uh, Firebase was started. Yeah, I think I'll manage. Firebase was developed like 2012. Uh, from 2012, I started as a real-time uh, database, which is a. Um, JSON uh, key value store uh, where you can uh, push your data and synchronize between clients within milliseconds. And it also supports offline. So you can, each client can work offline and get synchronized when they're online again. Uh, it further has um, more, more features added and it was acquired by Google some years back. And last year in the Google I.O. conference, it was announced as the a unified app platform for Android, iOS, and web mobile apps. So it has a really nice set of features to support the mobile, uh, uh, modern uh, mobile apps. Also in March uh, this year, they announced the uh, Firebase functions. So you can also, instead of just doing, uh, it's kind of open the, another dimension of architectures, which is a real contender to Azure Web Services and, and Azure. Okay, um, then we'll do a short demo. I have made a small demo app, which is just a public chat room. And hopefully the demo guy and the gods are with me. So let me see. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can move my cursor over here. <coughs> yeah, so this is the, the Firebase uh, web console, where you can set up your project and uh, manage your features, the features you want to use. And so uh, what we're doing, looking at here is the, the Firebase real-time database. It's an empty database now, and we want to uh, use that to, to host uh, the messages in, our, in the chat room. Um, I guess just find the other, the Android uh, app. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then we got a um, Summer in Forms app and uh, deployed both on an Android emulator and an iOS simulator. I can try to post some messages and see what happens. So the Android one says, anyone here? Uh-huh, I'm reaching the keyboard. Uh, and there you see, 
it was reflected in the, the list on the, the client and also pushed to the, the database. So you can see the, we got an uh, entry here now uh, with that message. And it was synchronized to the iOS uh, client as well. So we can try to reply from this one. Uh, I'm here. Oh, sorry. Um, here. And post. And that was uh, pushed to the to the server and synchronized to the other client as well. So they and I. This looks promising. Maybe they can have lunch. Great. Ready for lunch. Yeah, something like that. Um, and it, it's switched back. Then we can try to see how the, the wireless part or the, the non or offline mode is supported. So if you turn off the the wireless. Um, and this one got the message, so it responds back. Great. Or, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, so, now we see that was uh, reflected on locally on this client, but it's not pushed to the database and not synchronized to the other client. So, this one is getting a bit... Hmm. Guess not. It's also offline, so just uh, reflected on that client and not synchronized. Uh, then we can try to turn the network on again. Hopefully that will work. <laughs> That's a bit unstable, but uh, crossing fingers. Yeah, so those messages are now pushed to the to the database and synchronized on both clients. This, that's quite nice. Um, then we look into how is this really actually implemented. Um, so turn back to the slides for a moment. Um, so if you forget about summary in for a moment. Uh, if just doing uh, straightforward app development on iOS and Android using the native toolset, you typically have the, you will pull in the packages for iOS and for Android for Firebase and then do the whole application, two separate applications and duplicate all the logic on both of them. Um, purpose of Summarine is to try to avoid all that duplication and save some of the lifecycle cost. Um, so Summarine, in December, they, um, they published uh, Firebase bindings for iOS and Android. However, these uh, libraries are very platform specific and reflects the languages used on the platform. So it's not straightforward just to use those from, from Summarine. Uh, so we, have, we did some um, development trying to find a unified the .NET API on top of Firebase to handle the the marshalling of object values and uh, the different idioms on uh, async uh, programming. So we look a bit into that, and, uh, but the result is that we can have a summary forms application on top, uh, doing all, uh, all UI and all application logic. Um, so it looks a bit overwhelming. But what the, this is just NuGet packages. This is a generic uh, wrapping uh, application, not specific for the application. And this is what you have to do per application. Um, OK. Then we'll have a look at some code. Let's see. Um, uh -huh. So this is the. Um, this is the solution for this simple uh, chat uh, app. Um, so we have a, a shared project in Summer Informs. 
uh, use uh, containing all, all UI and application logic. Uh, and we have also a, a services project to communicate with this unified uh, API. So we said just start from the top. This is the, uh, this is the main application. It, does, uh, it has an observable collection of messages. Uh, that's a .NET kind of observable collection. Uh, and it has um, just a main page containing this list of messages and two input fields for name and, and the message and a post button. Yeah, so this uh, list view binds to the, the messages collection. Uh, and then we set up uh, observing messages from the, from the server. And that is, is quite simple. Um, so we have this, um, uh, we have a data service on top of this unified API where we say that we want to observe messages. And uh, then you have two types of events. You can, uh, you can have a new an, um, entity added to the collection or an uh, entity removed. And then we update this uh, local collection accordingly. Um, and then we have to post a new message. We also get this uh, data service and just post a message. OK, and then we can look at this. So, so this is the the whole UI and the, the handling of, of uh, the view model. Um, if we go into this services project, we have a, we have a, um, a DTO for the message. So it's just got the three properties, a name, text, and a date, and it inherits from an identifiable. That is the the only concept uh, we need to know about on this unified API is uh, because the whole uh, model of the Firebase uh, real-time database is a key value store. So this identifiable holds a key, and it can be any type of value in addition to that. Um, and then we have the providers. Providers is actually this unified API. So it's a, a generic interface taking a type, and then you can create, delete uh, entities of that type against the collection in Firebase database. Uh, you can read a certain entity, you can read all entities, and you can op also observe a collection. Um, and then we have a, so this is, this is generic and not specific for the, for the app. Further, we have an app-specific data service, which is wrapping this uh, provider. So it says what we need to do in this app. We can post a message, and we can observe the messages in the, in the uh, Firebase database collection. And the implementation of this is, is quite simple. It takes a data provider factory as a parameter, and then to post a message, we get the provider for messages for the path of the messages in the database. Uh, and the path, uh, this is um, it's just uh, messages. That's the, the path from the root on, on, the, on the store in, the, in Firebase. And to um, to observe messages, we just uh, get uh, the same provider the same for messages on the same path, and we can observe any changes to that collection. And that will be objects added, removed, or updated. OK. So that's, that's, this is the, the, just to recap, this is the code we need to make application specific to be able to observe and uh, update that collection in, uh, in Firebase, and, um, and let me see. On the, on the UI level, this is what we need to uh, react to those uh, observations and update the, the view model for the 
for the UI. That's, so that's, yeah, no, just a, maybe 100 con lines of code altogether. It's quite simple. Okay. Um, back to the slides, just to summarize. Um, so what are the, um, the lessons learned? Uh, I think this approach uh, looks very promising. Uh, we have a fairly cross-platform app in just a few lines of code with a, with a back, serverless backend. So you don't do, have to do any provisioning or management on that. You just declare what you need. Um, there's some uh, issues on these providers on the platform level that was a bit uh, difficult. Uh, to do the marshalling of object values, especially between .NET and Java, uh, was painful. And uh, when we upgraded Summer into the latest version, it broke. So we had to downgrade to the previous uh, cycle of Summer in. Yeah, so, so there's some issues there that we have to look further into. Okay, that's about it. Um, so thanks.